So those neighborhoods, many of our historic neighborhoods are becoming hot commodities when it comes to developers. We thought we'd talk just a little bit about what's going on and the balance between preserving the history and making sure that we see Nashville grow. Tiffany Capehart is a realtor and a land consultant here in the Middle Tennessee area and also has a double hat of being an adjunct professor of urban studies at Tennessee State University. Thank you so much for being with Thank us you. today. So let's talk just a little bit about what we're seeing going on. And, and I wonder, why do developers at least have their sights set on Jefferson Street and some of the other historic neighborhoods around town? Well, I think it always falls back to location. You know, um, Jefferson Street and North Nashville, you know, are very, have close proximity to downtown Nashville. And um, so when you think about being close to, you know, amenities, um, closer into transit, you know, more walkable neighborhoods, um, you know, there's just a desire to, to, you know, to be close into town now. And so I think that's, you know, that Jefferson Street is kind of one of the, um, last frontiers, if you will, in mm. terms of, you know, you know, just the kind of wholesale redevelopment, you know, there's still a lot of potential there. And so I think that's why, you know, developers are probably seeing that place as desirable. Yeah. And, and I get that because on one hand you say you want to see your city grow and thrive and, you know, and obtain things mm -hmm. uh, and move forward in mm -hmm. the right kind of direction. But then on the flip side, there's that desire to really want to preserve the history and the families who have lived in these neighborhoods yeah. for generations. So so how do you balance that realistically and, and sort of move forward without running people out? Absolutely. I mean, and, and I think if um, if I had the the real answer to that, yeah. I'd be a millionaire. Everybody would, <laughs> wouldn't we? Yeah. But I think um, you know, I think one of the things to make sure to do is to you know, first off, do a lot of engagement. And with Jefferson Street, that's been done quite a bit. There's been many studies um, here locally um, around that part of Nashville, um, just how to preserve, how to redevelop Jefferson Street, but still preserve the character. And um, I think we're seeing some of that happen now. Um, I just hosted a panel last year with Nashville Design Week, and the panel was culturally relevant place, place making in places. And businesses like um, Slim and Huskies and 1822, the Jefferson Street Cafe, mm -hmm. um, Garden Brunch Cafe, when you go into that restaurant, you see African-American artists on the walls, you see a, um, a mostly African-American um, staff that works there. It's about really creating new places, but then keeping um, uh, keeping the idea of the culture and the heritage that's there, uh, making note of it in the design of a place and how you um, cultivate, you know, how you run a business yeah. in those places. Um, I think what happens is when businesses come in and they totally, you know, it totally strips, you know, it doesn't, re it doesn't reflect anything about the place where it's at, you right. know. Um, and I think that's what's so cool about like local businesses, you know, when you go into East Nashville, it's very reminiscent, you know, coffee shops and things like that are very reminiscent of East, East Nashville and other places like that. So I think it's about preserving what's there even when you're coming in with new new things. Right. Yeah. It's interesting because it, we all know it takes dollars to preserve and to restore. And and just like in the piece that we saw, uh, the, the owner of Woodcuts, you know, showed that visual mm -hmm. of these brand new, very tall three-story homes next to the beautiful little cottages that aren't mm -hmm. as new and, and shiny mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. and, and sort of the, the disparity there. So how do you keep up mm -hmm. um, with, you know, making sure if you want to preserve your home and preserve the history mm -hmm. that you still blend with the neighborhood. Yeah, so a couple of things. So for existing development, you know, if, if you are a homeowner in these neighborhoods, the best thing to do to keep up with the change that's going on is to try to maintain your home as best you can. Um, you know, keep up the maintenance on it. Yeah. Um, do the updates that may need to be done. Um, if you're, and, and some people are um, financially are not able to do that. There's nonprofits that um, I, I believe help with those types of things coming in and kind of retrofitting a home, especially for older residents, to help them stay in their home safely. Um, so that's one thing you can do. And then if you're a developer coming into these places, creating new housing, um, just again, going back to context, you know, I, I do trainings with local realtors and developers here in town, and I talk about, you know, 
how you can build something new, but think about the context around mm. you. You know, if you have bungalows all along the street, it may not be good to build a three-story modern, you know. So I think if people just need to be very more intentional with, with how we do development and design, and I think by doing so, you can create a much, you can strike a better balance. But the thinking, I think, is, uh, from developers, is building that three-story next to that bungalow um, eventually is going to cause that person to have mm -hmm. to leave. Because the, you, the more you improve, the higher the taxes, for instance, and mm -hmm. all that good stuff, right? Mm -hmm. uh, and not so good stuff if you're on a budget. So, so is, when we look at these neighborhoods and, and the communities and what's happening there, um, is it more of a good thing or not such a good thing that, yeah. they're, that they're growing in the way that they're growing? Yeah, I mean, so when I, so you don't want to have a neighborhood that doesn't grow. Yeah. You know, yeah. we don't want things to continue to be dilapidated. Um, we want services, and when I say we, I'm talking about African-American community. Mm -hmm. We want services in our neighborhoods. Um, I, you know, it's so funny hearing the speaker talk, she said, we like Starbucks, yes. you know, uh -huh. <laughs> you know, or, or coffee, and you know, we like nice restaurants and things like that. So we want to see those things. Um, however, I think there has to be a um, balance, and it does take some, some kind of moral compass too. Like you right. have to be a developer that comes in and says, you know, I do want to preserve the history and the character that's here. I do want to preserve some affordability, so I'm going to include affordability component in whatever I do. You know, so you do have to have that, and I think you have to have that more so in neighborhoods that are more vulnerable to um, to that change. You know, you have to think you have to think more about that. Yeah. Let's take a quick break, and when we come back, I want to talk about some of the tougher subjects, but then other things that maybe homeowners can do to make sure that if they want to stay there, that they can stay there. Sure. We'll be right back after this. Mm -hmm. 